packages, and uh, that is, uh, uh, so it might be some scud, kind of hard to tell with a still image like this, but again, this is clearly uh, a sign that this is one storm that we have to watch very carefully. Ethelsville is in the far western part of Pickens County, uh, not too far from uh, Columbus, Mississippi. So let's go back to the uh, radar system, the main graphic system, if we can. And uh, this will be kind of an overview. And again, we're watching thunderstorms that are cutting up into parts of north and west Alabama. And uh, these storms are severe. They are capable of producing tornadoes. We have two distinct circulations, but you can see these things are lined up like trains on a track. The eastward progression is slow. Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden, Tuscaloosa. It's going to be a while before the storms affect those cities, but we've got one possible circulation here, one possible circulation here. Other down to the south all the way down to Columbus, Mississippi. And the progression, it's slow, but it's moving in our direction. But with time, as we lose the daytime heating process, the low levels cool, the air becomes a little more stable. The main dynamic support stays north and west of here. We are somewhat optimistic the storms might not pack a punch like they have seen earlier today. But again, we clearly want to stress they are all capable of producing a tornado. We'll have to watch them. But in Alabama, we've got these tornado warning polygons now. One is for Southern Lamar, the northwestern corner of Pickens. One is for the northern part of Fayette County, southern part of Marion County, extreme east central Lamar County. Other than that, things are very quiet. There, and we should mention there's a tornado watch that's in effect for a large part of north Alabama, north of uh, Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden, in Tuscaloosa, and another watch will probably be issued later tonight. It's just going to be a very slow process of getting this stuff out of here. There's the watch area. Okay, the, thanks, Brian. Yeah, the, the counties in, in purple, th that's the tornado watch. And all these counties in green, those are flash flood warnings, or I'm sorry, it's a flash flood watch in our state. These are flash flood warnings over here in Mississippi. That's where the storms have been training over and over and over again. Uh, so it's been a pretty rough ride, but in our neck of the woods, this is the reason we are here. And again, we apologize that we're on the air, but as soon as the danger goes away, the warnings expire, the warnings are canceled, we go right back to regular programming. So uh, let's zoom back into the storm here. We've got two distinct circulations, and the, the lead circulation, this is the one that dropped a very violent tornado that hit Louisville, Mississippi earlier today, producing very extensive damage. Went a little tighter, and again, you can see the inflow notch right here. Uh, that possible tornado is going to be right in through here. There's the inflow notch, and it's going to be in this region here, passing north of Fayette, coming in this direction. We've been encouraging people in Winfield and Guin to be in a safe place from this possible tornado. The other possible tornado is located right here. Uh, there's the inflow notch. Possible tornado is here, moving up into Lamar County. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 96. This is Millport. That's Highway 17 North, going up through Vernon and Sullivan. And we've got those two distinct circulations, and these are moving northeast. The eastward progression remains very slow. Let's go to the other high-res radar with the velocity display, and I'll show you what they look like on that. This thing is really wrapped up. I mean, that is a very dangerous storm that is life-threatening in the far northwestern corner of Pickens County, moving up into southern Lamar County. This will affect places like Millport uh, and ultimately Highway 17. This is the second circulation. This is not as tight as the first one here, but still it is capable of producing a tornado. That's moving northeast up in the direction of Winfield and Guin and Brilliant up in Marion County. So two distinct tornado warning polygons. It's kind of confusing when you've got two of these circulations so close. This is polygon number one for this storm that's down in the far northwestern tip of Pickens County, north of Ethel Ethelsville. This is the circulation number two that is coming up into uh, the southern part of Marion County. And again, that's moving up toward Winfield and Ewan. So if you are in either one of these tornado warning polygons, you need to be in a safe place right away. Uh, the, uh, the, the lead storm, this one right here, uh, that is, that's the one that caused extensive damage. And both of them have prompted many, many reports of uh, tornadoes uh, today. Uh, the Weather Service is going to continue the tornado warning for parts of Fayette, Lamar, and Marion until 7.30. Uh, tornado possibly 10 miles north of Fayette. This is based on the latest warning. Uh, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. And again, you can see with that track, it's going to be up here pretty close to Winfield in just a little bit. This is the other tornado that is coming up on the community of Millport. Uh, Millport is clearly in the polygon on this one. So uh, if you're in Millport, you need to do something about that and go to a safe place. And I would say if you're in Kennedy, you need to be in a safe place as well. If you're in the city of Belk, you need to be in a safe place as well. Small room, lowest floor near the center, away from windows. Uh, if you can, put on a helmet. Uh, many people lose their life in our state due to head injuries, a bike
bicycle helmet, a batting helmet can greatly reduce that. Uh, we encourage people to uh, put on hard sole shoes, and if you can, have a whistle or an air horn. If you need help, you can have those, and first responders know to listen for them in tornado-damaged areas as they do search <coughs> and rescue. And uh, also, we should mention here, too, a lot of people are just joining us. We've had loss of life in our state today. We've had at least two people that have been killed uh, in Limestone County from tornadoes. There has been a civil emergency declared in Limestone County. Uh, let me just read this again, and that we're all requested to read this. Uh, this is a message transmitted at the request of the Limestone County Emergency Management Agency. Due to the severe weather that has impacted Limestone County this evening, the Limestone County EMA requests that all non-essential persons stay off the road. And if you can give me a shot of uh, Limestone County on the radar, Brian, on, let's take our main graphic system. Uh, Limestone County is up here in the Tennessee Valley, and this is in the Huntsville DMA, the television market, but yet uh, this, a lot of people watch us on the stream and people have relatives there and they're concerned, but they're encouraging all non-essential persons to just stay off the roads. There is a search and recovery uh, effort underway now. There are search and recovery teams. They need all available roadways to access all damage areas throughout the county. In addition, uh, down power lines pose a hazard to motorists and pedestrians. So uh, there is a civil emergency declared for Limestone County from a storm that passed through there about, uh, what, Brian, 70, 75 minutes ago, something like that. Something like that. All right, so let's go back. And, and again, we, let me just, let's put that back on here. It looks like that's current. And that, that is. Wow. So while so, they are doing search and rescue, we have another tornado warning polygon that has just been issued. This is for parts of Morgan, for parts of uh, Lawrence, and for parts of Limestone counties for that storm. Is another rotation is coming up toward Athens. So while they're trying to recover and understand two people have been killed up here, now they've got another rotating storm coming in. So that's pretty rough. Uh, now, let's go back to, let's back it down to our other storms, Brian, in our part of the woods. We're going to focus on the storms in our television market. These are tornado warnings in effect for parts of West Alabama, and we have two distinct tornado warning polygons. Uh, this is number one. This affects areas north of Fayette and the southern part of Marion County, Winfield, U, and Hubbardville. This is the other one. This includes Millport and Kennedy uh, for a second rotation. Both of these are distinct rotations, and if you're in those, you need to go to a safe place right away. Let's take Internet One if we can, and this is John Brown. And uh, Do we know exactly where John is, Brian? <laughs> well, not exactly. Uh, I have some He's clues, got some though. wicked lightning on that camera. He, he does. He's north of Glen Allen on 22. Okay. Uh, so he's on Interstate 22, and he is going to be very close to that first circulation uh, that is coming up toward uh, Winfield and you and Glen Allen is very close to those cities. And, and, and he actually did say it looks broader to him. Okay. The, the overall circulation. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, clearly, the lead circulation approaching John is very broad at this point. But you might want to zoom into that a little bit, and we'll lose the uh, chat session over there on that uh, video so we can see that full screen. Uh, again, this is... Uh, one of the, our partners that had been out in the field today, we want to thank them for their efforts. Uh, this is probably the hardest part of the job. It's uh, dealing with that. Let's go back to the uh, high-resolution radar, and we'll put that behind me. We have two rotations that are dangerous. This is the one approaching John Brown. John Brown is along Interstate 22 up here near Glen Allen, which is right here, and he's basically in the path of this. This is pretty broad. It's not very tight. We've not had reports, but yet, because of the history of this, we have to respect that, and accordingly, the Weather Service is maintaining a tornado warning for parts of northern Fayette County, southern Marion County. This is the most dangerous storm on the board. I'll just tell you that right now. That is a very tight circulation, very characteristic of dropping a tornado, and this is just southwest of Millport, moving right toward downtown Millport. Uh, one of the ways we can determine if a tornado is on the ground with our new correlation coefficient products is this. We can look for a little spot called a TDS, a tornado debris signature, and there's not a well-defined one at this point. Uh, so at this point, we don't exactly see that, but there still could be one there because that is a very well-defined uh, spot where there's clearly sharp rotation. So again, that is rotation coming up into downtown Millport. This is southern Lamar County in West Alabama. This is Kennedy right here. Kennedy is in the path. Belk is in this tornado warning polygon as well. Uh, so everybody from Millport on the road uh, back up toward Fayette need to be in a safe place because there's clearly potential for a tornado down here. The northern storm 
up here. This still could produce a tornado. And again, John Brown is very close to Glen Allen. Uh, the, the Interstate 22 corridor is right here. This is Glen Allen. That's the tornado circulation coming up in this direction. So we're going to keep an eye on that and watch uh, John's camera. In fact, let's take John's on Internet One. Uh, this is John Brown along Interstate uh, 22. And uh, he is in a downpour, Brian. This is not the uh, ultimate storm chase right here, is it? No, it's not. Uh, you definitely are, don't want to be in rain like he, he's experiencing there. And all that lightning is tremendous. Well, there's a lot more people out on the highway than I would expect, too. <clears throat> yeah, in fact, I'm uh, looking at some other images. In fact, let me uh, go back to uh, Twitter. J James, I'll mention that... Uh, National Weather Service, and of course most meteorologists rely on the National Weather Service's operation of the uh, weather balloon program to collect data above the ground. And uh, the sounding, what we call the sounding, is in from the Birmingham site this evening. And the Birmingham Weather Service folks report that our convectively available potential energy, boy, we're pegging the geek meter with this, uh, CAPE, convectively available potential energy, which gives us an idea of how strong the updrafts can be. The CAPE on the sounding, this afternoon in Burma is 1800. So that is way up there. And the shear is off this scale. We use a, 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 veloc a, a value called helicity. And in the helicity value is 468. Uh, typically, anything over about 150 is considered high. So those values both indicate why we're having all this weather uh, going on because of the st uh, state of the atmosphere, James. Okay, and again, one quick note. Uh, thanks for your patience. We, we are going to air Dancing with the Stars. We can't air it right now due to this uh, tornado emergency situation, but we are going to replay that. Of course, you can watch this on Hulu, ABC.com, all these apps. You can watch this a lot of different ways, and people know that. But we're going to re-air it on, on television, and we'll let you know as soon as we do that uh, once we get through with this. Uh, let's go to an image uh, off the uh, Apple TV. This was uh, Tabernacle Road in Columbus, Mississippi. This is from the first storm, Brian. This is from the first <laughs> one. But we've had so many. We're going to have to start naming the storms, James. Right. Uh, but again, that is an example of what has been uh, happening here with these things. And again, uh, uh, that's pretty rough. And uh, again, th this is, uh, these are storms you've got to take seriously. And the problem we have now is the fact that we are getting into darkness and you can't see this stuff. So let's go back to John's stream and uh, you're going to see a lot of rain coming down along Interstate 22. This is John Brown. He's around Glen Allen along Interstate 22. And, and remember, John has been trained. People say, why do you send people out on the path of these things? Uh, but uh, the bottom line is he is, uh, he is safe at this point. And uh, we're watching for those uh, circulations. All right, uh, we've got some uh, we got some hail falling in Tuscaloosa, and I thought I'd uh, take a quick look at that. There's so many things going on right now. Uh, the, the storms in Tuscaloosa are not severe. I want to make that uh, perfectly clear. And actually, I, that that's a bogus report. That, I, I was going to yeah. say, James. I, that, I don't. Yeah. Some people try and play games with this. There, there's nothing happening in Tuscaloosa right now. Clearly, the, the line is is pretty solid, and it's running from near Decatur all the way down through northwest Alabama down to Columbus, and then down to a point uh, on this side of Jackson. Uh, so, uh, again, we, we there, there's nothing severe going on in Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, or Gadsden. And uh, by the time the storms get here, they will be more linear. And the one thing we got to be worried about, too, it's flash flooding. These are becoming in a line. And we've talked about this as we go into the night. The transition will be from more of a supercell, discrete cell thing with these large tornadoes to a flash flood wind problem. And uh, this is clearly going to be a flash flood problem. The rains are tremendous. And again, you can see from uh, John Brown's camera that we've had that heavy rain falling along Interstate 22 uh, near Glen Allen. And he's up in the southern part of uh, Marion County. So uh, this is going to be not only a severe weather threat, but also a flash flood threat uh, as well. Uh, so but we're going to focus on the uh, velocity display. And really, this is the look coming from the uh, Weather Service in Birmingham. I'm going to change that back to Columbus, Mississippi. Uh, it, it, Columbus is a lot closer to these uh, rotating storms. And despite the tree problem we talked about, where, where there's some blockage of the beam, we can still get a pretty good shot. That's the lead circulation up here in northern Fayette County. And this is coming up very close to where John's camera is along Interstate 22. And there's a tornado warning. And we still advise uh, everybody in uh, places like Ewan and Winfield, uh, to be in a good, safe place until this thing winds down about uh, 7.30. The Weather Service has not changed any of the uh, tornado warnings as far as I can tell, Brian. I don't think they have. No, they have not. 
Uh, in fact, uh, they have issued at 710 a tornado warning for parts of Lamar and Fayette until 815. Uh, the storm was near Millport, moving that, east at 40. That's the second storm. Right. That, that's that's this, 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 the storm back to the... Uh, Back to the southwest down here, it's this one right here, and that clearly is the most dangerous storm. This is the lead storm that's coming up to the northeast, and again, that's the one that's affecting places like Hubbardville and Glen Allen and Guin and Winfield, uh, but clearly this one right down here is packing a punch as well, and looking at the two, they're very close to each other, and uh, they're both a little broad now. I'd say the, the southwest circulation is not as tight as it used to be, but it's still so certainly something that we have to respect at this point. Uh, so, but I, you know, I've not seen any damage, Brian, for, nope. from, for in Alabama. Have, now, we've have we've seen them in Mississippi, a lot of damage, but in Alabama, uh, you know, a little bit around Marion County from that uh, tornado warning they had earlier, from these storms. Now, the big problem is up in the Tennessee Valley. You've had two people that have died today from weather. Uh, we've had major problems. We have a civil emergency in Limestone County with this very extensive damage. But we have been very fortunate here in this part of Alabama that we have not had major damage in west central Alabama. Uh, but still, you want to watch these things very carefully. Again, we'll kind of look at these carefully. This is the lead storm. Uh, the circulation center seems to be right in through here. And again, it's moving northeast. This is Glen Allen, Winfield, Guin, and Guin. And Interstate 22 runs right in through here, and this is going to continue moving to the northeast. It is clearly not as organized as it once was, but it's still capable of producing a tornado. The circulation down to the south is rather broad, but it's clearly circulating here. And again, this is Kennedy, and this is Millport. Highway 96 goes up through Belk and to Fayette, and all of these communities are under tornado warnings. Let's go to Isaiah Harper. Isaiah, where are you, and what do you have for us? Well, James, I'm here in the city of Tuscaloosa. I mean, you know, of course, we've been fortunate throughout the evening. We haven't gotten as much as a, a, a drop of rain here in Tuscaloosa, but I can tell you in the last 20 minutes, the intensity of the lightning that we've seen uh, coming from the west has gotten stronger and stronger as, as we pan off here. You can take a look. Uh, we're seeing a flash practically every uh, every 30 seconds here. The, the thunderstorms have gotten stronger. The wind is picking up, so we're feeling whatever is going across the north uh, over there near Fed in Pickens County. Speaking of Fed, I just got off the phone with uh, the EMA, M EMA director, uh, James Sanders in Fed. He tells me right now that he can't talk, and usually that means when they can't talk, they're monitoring that storm, trying to make sure that people in the county are in their safe place, and they're trying to watch whatever type of activity is going on in Fed County. So I called him. He says, I'll call you right back. I can't talk right now. So they're monitoring that situation over in Fed. James? Yeah, th thank you, Isaiah. Uh we appreciate that. We're, Brian, you go first. I've got one report, too, from Pickens County. Uh, I just want to make sure you were seeing the people trapped in the basement of a house that has collapsed. Camper yes. Camper trailer has been blown away. It's via the Pickens County Fire Department. I don't, it's uh, County Road 30, Old Highway 82. Right. Uh, so, again, this is uh, the southern storm. Yes. Uh, a house has collapsed, entrapment. Uh, camper trailer blown away, and this is from Pickens County Fire Dispatch. And again, this is the far, far, th th this is near the Mississippi state line, and it's from this when it was here. This is US 82 right here, that blue line, and uh, that damage would be about right in through here. And uh, again, that is what's up around Millport and Kennedy right now. So, uh, and also there was another report that came in to confirm that uh, through Twitter. Uh, report of damage in Pickens County on County Road 30 at the state line with people trapped, which is probably the same uh, incident. Sounds like the same incident, James. Right. Um, and also, one note, the governor of uh, the state of Alabama, Governor Robert Bentley, uh, on his official Twitter account, he has declared a state of emergency for all Alabama counties as a result of severe weather impacting the state. And just uh, reading some of the statement here, some of the communities have already experienced significant damage as a result of tornadoes that began moving through the state earlier today. By issuing a state of emergency, I'm directing all state agencies to take necessary actions to respond to Alabama communities that need help. So again, uh, the governor's state of Alabama declaring a state of emergency for all 67 uh, Alabama counties. Uh, and again, the, the, the night is far from over. Uh, we are some, we, are, we have guarded optimism that as the storms move east, the threat will shift more from a tornado threat to a flood 
wind hail type threat. Not that that's a big party, but uh, uh, still we think that the structure will become more linear and the tornado threat will decrease. It's not going to nothing. We're going to have a tornado threat through the night. But uh, for the next several hours, we think we're going to see a gradual phase from these supercell storms like we've had throughout the afternoon and this evening into more of a linear type event with strong straight line winds and potential for flash flooding. But again, we'll take a look at our two circulations. This is circulation number one. Uh, this is moving to the northeast. This is going to be cutting across the far southern part of Marion County and really Hewen is kind of sitting on the far edge of this thing. Winfield is closer to the core of the polygon. Seems like these have veered a little bit to the right. Uh, this is Walker County and at this point there is no formal warning for Walker County. We'll keep an eye on that. That's pretty good circulation moving northeast. That might be clipping uh, Walker County around Eldridge. Uh, we'll watch that but I would not advise travel along the interstate. Speaking of that, let's go to John Brown and, and John Brown can travel because he has radar on board. He knows exactly where the rotation is and he knows how to be He's safe. He knows where to stop. Uh, John and Mike Wilhelm, they were in Tuscaloosa three years ago and did a remarkable job on the ground and while staying safe. And uh, you can see the, the lightning display from uh, John's camera. And that lightning is pretty ferocious and it's obviously raining very heavily. And you know, Brian, these are, these are not the classic Southern Plains storms we got now. These are... Take a look at the Fayette Skycam too, James, if we could... Yeah, let's go to the Skycam network. And uh, yeah, it's pouring. Uh, it, it, that, that Fayette Skycam, uh, the dew point has come down a little bit. The temperature's come down several degrees. The dew point's come down a little bit. That's uh, always good, but still 66 is definitely respectable, so we don't want to uh, short that at all. It's better than, better than 70, though. Better than 70, yes. <laughs> the, the, the lower the dew point, the better off we are. Precisely, precisely. Uh, and again, uh, uh, a lot of people in Tuscaloosa. Let's go to our Tuscaloosa sky cam. If we can do that, let's point it west. Uh, Brian, uh, coming up. We're going to take a look at maybe the, probably the one on top of the courthouse. The SD is going to be the, the better camera in this case. Uh, wanted to look at the sky to the north and west of the city. Let's see if we see any lightning displays. A lot of folks in Tuscaloosa are saying we're getting lightning. The encouraging thing, again, the dew point has dropped. The dew point was 70 in Tuscaloosa, and uh, the dew point now is sitting at... Uh, uh, 67, southwest wind at 14, very balmy. The temperature sitting at uh, 80 degrees at this point. There is no severe weather in uh, Tuscaloosa uh, at all at this point. And by the time these storms reach Tuscaloosa, we are we have guarded optimism that the uh, tornado threat will be lower. It's certainly not zero, uh, but it will be a little lower than it has been as the storms move away from the better dynamics. Uh, to, Put the thing down just a hair, Brian, so I can see where, where we're looking there. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're looking due south right now. So let's go back the other let's way really quickly. Yeah. Right. There we go. Uh, I know some people are seeing lightning in the distance, almost like a summer evening. The lightning you're seeing from Tuscaloosa, that is from the uh, thunderstorms that are over Fayette uh, County and uh, Marion County. And uh, those are storms that are pretty tall. I would imagine they're over 50,000 feet. So let's go back to the Fayette sky cam. We can't see much uh, there from Tuscaloosa. We'll go back to Fayette where the rain is pouring down. And uh, the city of Fayette is not in a tornado warning. You've never been in one. The polygons have been north and west of you, but the rain is clearly coming down in uh, downtown Fayette. And uh, they're sitting at 72 with a west wind at uh, seven miles per hour. And again, the... Uh, uh, the volunteer fire department in Ethelsville in Pickens County, they're responding to that entrapment. They don't have a specific address for that. All right, here's a new tornado warning. This is going to include Walker County. I figure they would probably do that. Uh, let's go to the big graphic system, Brian. Let's show this new polygon warning. This is going to be a uh, tornado warning for parts of Fayette, Marion, and Walker until 830. And this is what th this this rotation that has been over northern Fayette County is kind of turning to the right. Instead of moving northeast, it's moving more east-northeast. And in response to that, the Weather Service has issued a new tornado warning polygon. This is in effect until 830 tonight for parts of Fayette, Marion, and Walker. And let's zoom in a little closer and Please understand, when you hear Walker County is under a tornado warning, this is only a little part 
of Walker County. This does not include Jasper. This does not include Parrish. Does not include Dora. Does not include Summerton. Uh, this does include Carbon Hill. It does include Eldridge. Uh, and it does include uh, the city of Nauvoo up here, which is kind of almost on the Walker Winston County line. But Carbon Hill is in this. And, and the reason that rotation that is over northeastern Fayette County is moving more to the east northeast at this point. Uh, so this includes Interstate 22, Alabama Highway 5. Alabama Highway 195, which is right here. These are roads coming out of Jasper. And uh, this is the storm that did all the damage earlier today in Louisville, Mississippi. I mean, this was like a long time ago. Uh, we'll go back to the uh, high-resolution radar, and let me just show you the velocity display. That's the circulation right there, and that's a very significant circulation. Uh, it's not as tight as it was earlier today, but it's still there. This could drop a tornado, and it's moving up like this, so this includes Carbon Hill and Eldridge. This is Nauvoo right here, kind of sitting on the Walker-Winston County line. Uh, so this is a new tornado warning until 830 for the lead circulation, uh, and again, this will include parts of Southern Marion, basically from Winfield, all the way down here to about Carbon Hill. Uh, it includes Nauvoo. Uh, it includes Eldridge. So that's the lead circulation. Coming up behind it, we have the second circulation. And this is the one that's located near Belk. This is the highway that goes from Millport back up to Fayette. And this one is not as tight as it was. These are going through cyclic changes. Uh, but this is still capable of producing a tornado. So the Weather Service is continuing to issue tornado warnings for both of these storms. So we have two distinct circulation centers in West Alabama. Uh, and they are both moving to the east northeast like this. Still, still these are west of the or west of the major population centers. If you are in Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden, it's going to be a while. We talked about it being after 7, maybe way after 7. Well, here we are. It's after 7. They're still north and west of, uh, of here. So this is a tornado warning for parts of Fayette, Marion, and Walker for this lead circulation until 8.30. Uh, the tornado was 7 miles south of Glen Allen. Let's go to John Brown's feed, and then it's pitch dark out here. We're not going to be able to see much. Uh, but again, uh, John is showing the sky along Interstate 22. Dark and lots of lightning. Yep. And uh, clouds are racing along very quickly. And uh, as we get into nightfall, you have to wait on lightning to illuminate things. And th this is a nightmare for the storm chasers, the these volunteers that, like John, that go out and do this. And they don't do it for fame or money or glory. They're doing it trying to help people. And, and they have done such a great job for us over the years. Uh, but it makes it hard, man. You, you, goodness, you've been out there at oh, night. This, this is tough. Uh, the address of the damage in Pickens County is apparently uh, Caston, C-A-S-T-O-N, Caston Road. Yeah, that, that's going to be in the far, 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 far western part of Pickens County. It's right. almost near the Mississippi state line. Uh, but that's the location of where people, uh, possible uh, entrapment of people and the house that may have collapsed. Now, here's some good news. The Weather Service has decided to start, they're going to start issuing severe thunderstorm warnings, uh, which is good, not tornado warnings. Uh, this is going to be a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of uh, Fayette and Pickens until 8.15, uh, in that the rotational signature on uh, this storm coming out of Pickens has just gotten uh, kind of small. Let's go back to the big graphic system. Let's show the polygons. Uh, we kind of like to do that. Uh, this is going to be a look at the watches and the warnings in effect. And uh, let's kind of zoom down a little bit to the south and you can see this is our new severe thunderstorm warning polygon. This is for another storm that is coming out of Mississippi. Uh, so instead of a tornado warning, they've gone with a severe thunderstorm warning. And uh, this includes the 82 corridor, US 82, through Pickens County, Reform and Gordo. It includes a little part of Fayette County as well. So uh, severe thunderstorm warning for parts of northern Pickens. No tornado warning here. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But this is the mess we've got up here. We've got this new, uh, these new tornado warning polygons, and now the city of Fayette is involved in this. Uh, and what's, what the Weather Service does, they, they adjust the polygons as the storms begin to change direction a little bit. So basically all of Fayette County is under a polygon warning right now. Uh, and if you're in the city of Fayette, if you're in the city of Barrie, this includes you. This, this southern circulation, these have turned more east. They, they've turned more to the right. Uh, so now we've got the city of Fayette in a tornado warning polygon, the city of Barrie, Hubbardville, Winfield, Brilliant, Glen Allen, Eldridge and Carbon Hill. These are communities in Walker County. So if I've called out your town, you are in a tornado warning. And we advise everybody to go to a safe place. Are these 
as dangerous looking as the ones earlier today that came through Mississippi? No, but hey, all it takes is one small tornado coming down your street, and that makes it an event that you'll remember for a lifetime. Uh, so we want you to be in a small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows, no mobile homes, no vehicles. Helmet if you've got one, bicycle helmet, batting helmet, hard sole shoes in case you have to walk over tornado debris, a whistle or an air horn if you need help, and, and the responders have been trained to listen for that. And uh, that's what's going on in our market. Up in the Tennessee Valley, there's a tornado warning in effect for all places, Limestone County, where two people were killed earlier today. The death toll in the state, the latest I've heard from the news department is two. Uh, up in Limestone County, uh, we have had no deaths in our market area down here so far today. And this is it, Brian. We've got, we're down to this one line of storms. And, you know, it's... Although I'm concerned the, the storm's still coming out of the Jackson area, James, uh, while it's taking on a more linear characteristic, when you zoom in on it, there's still somewhat discrete cells right. in that line. Right. right. Uh, it, it look, from a distance, it looks solid. It, it does. But when you also look at this, is that we still have tornado warnings down there uh, to the uh, east and southeast of Jackson. Uh, but also notice the green. Uh, these storms have been training over the same areas, and we've been getting some pretty, pretty significant rainfall amounts. And so all of the green that you see outlined on the map, those are flash flood warnings. Those are not watches. These are our warnings. Uh, much of Mississippi and much of Alabama has been under a flash flood watch. Uh, well, actually, the flash flood watches started, uh, well, for Mississippi, they started yesterday, but for Alabama, they started today. And uh, those flash flood warnings are because they're getting some tremendous rains with these storms just training. Like James described earlier, it's just like a train moving on a track. You know, one car follows the other car, and these thunderstorms are just following one behind the other. So they're putting rain down over, over a rel relatively small area. So the result is that some spots are getting tremendous amounts of rain, whereas over here at Birmingham, we haven't even seen any drops yet. We haven't, as Isaiah was reporting, we haven't seen anything in the way of any significant rain at Tuscaloosa yet. Uh, the entire line area and, uh, of the echoes, the uh, rain and the storms, are moving to the southeast, but they're moving southeast very slow as individual storms train to the northeast. And that's uh, resulting in a serious uh, flash flood issue, and that may become more of a serious flash flood issue for uh, Fayette and Marion and Pickens and uh, parts of Walker uh, and maybe even a little bit of the southern Marion County there, James. Yep, and again, in the other box, Brian, you got John Brown, who is uh, along Interstate 22. And I'll just say, you know, we've still got very significant circulation coming up very close to John Brown. Yes. Uh, very significant circulation. I don't want to diminish the action that you should be taking in any of these tornado warning polygons. Are they as wicked looking as they were earlier today? No, but again, they're, they're very serious. And uh, John is very close to that lead circulation. The lead circulation is just south of Glen Allen. Uh, and again, it's going to be coming up, coming up along Interstate 22 uh, around Eldridge in Walker County. It's basically passing out of Fayette County. And I can clearly tell you now that this lead circulation is going to be passing well to the east of Guin. If you're watching us in Guin, I can give you an all clear from this lead circulation. Uh, the issue, it's going to be specifically over toward, uh, in Winfield, I'd stay in your safe place for a little longer. Winfield, uh, Glen Allen, Eldridge, these are core communities that are in the path of this. And again, John is going to put himself in a position where we can see, and I'm watching the cloud bases, Brian, and we might see something underneath those cloud bases, but you have to wait on the lightning to illuminate the cloud bases. And the lightning can also be confusing, James. Uh, a report's coming in now from the Forest Volunteer Fire Department, uh, which I believe is in northwestern Pickens County, if I'm not mistaken. They're asking for mutual aid assistance from Reform and Gordo for people that are trapped in homes along the Caston Ka Road and County Road 53 in Ethelsville area. Wow. Which, so, which session is that on? Uh, is that the Birmingham session? That's on the BMX chat, yes. Okay, goodness. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you, you do it, James, monitoring all of these chats uh, simultaneously. I've got, I've got about 15 of these things up in here. And John Brown, his shot right now, he's in Carbon Hill at the Nauvoo exit. Nauvoo, yeah. Nauvoo. Okay. Yes, and let me tell you what now, he, he's, uh, you know, he's going to be in a position where he's probably going to be seeing something here. So we're going to kind of stick with uh, John's camera. And if you can put behind me, uh, I think Daniel's back. Daniel, you back to Daniel's back there. Uh, we, we have been on, we went through three shifts, I think, today of directors. <laughs> I've seen uh, a lot of people come and go. Yeah, Nobody stayed. Yeah. Daniel is in it for <laughs> well, the long Brenda, haul. Well, Brenda, I shouldn't say that. Look, look, at the, look at the lowering. Look. Yes. 
all right, so. Oh, oh. So watch that lowering. Uh, again, this is a, you know, this is a spotter's nightmare doing this at night, but it looks like there could be a distinct lowering. It could be a wall cloud underneath that over there in the right part of the screen. Yeah. And again, this is uh, coming from uh, John Brown's camera that is at the uh, Nauvoo exit along Interstate 22. Uh, that is very close to the uh, uh, Walker Fayette County line or I guess the Walker Marion County line, I'm sorry, up, up in that region up there. Uh, this is uh, well to the east of Winfield and well to the west of Jasper. And uh, that's where there's very intense circulation that we're watching very carefully on radar. And really I'm looking at, at this more on the Birmingham radar right now. Uh, this is, uh, quite frankly, it's sharpened up tremendously and that uh, uh, is coming right up toward the highway right where John is. I mean, this is gonna be crossing very close to his location. And again, let me stress, Yes. That John has been trained for 12 years. Uh, he, he is a veteran. He is safe. He has gear on board where he is looking at the same thing that we see, all of these uh, uh, single-site radar products that enable him to be safe. This is not a Lone Ranger trying to get a YouTube video and, you know, get a million views and get some Google AdSense money. I mean, he, he is in it for the right reason, and he knows what he's doing. Um, let, let's... Maybe if we can double box John and me with that uh, high-res radar behind me, yeah, this is the circulation right here that's coming up on John's position. And again, that, that couplet is tighter. And now we're looking at it from the Birmingham radar. We don't have the tree issue. And if you missed it, the, there's so many tall trees around the Columbus Air Force Base radar, it's becoming a bit of an issue where there's some reliability problems with data, but this is right from the Birmingham side, and again, there's a very well-defined sharp velocity couplet that's coming up near the county line. This is kind of where Fayette, Marion, Walker counties all come together. Uh, communities like uh, uh, Eldridge uh, and uh, uh, Kansas, if you, you, you know where you are out there, and if you're close to this, you should clearly be in a safe place. James, I, yes. can, you, can you do reflectivity? Yes, I can. And look at the spot just to the west of the couplet. Okay. Uh, do you see that weakness in there? Yeah, I do. It's, it's a donut hole. Yes. That. Well, no. I, well, it's a hole. Yeah. What I'm worried about is that could be a rear flank downdraft. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's, it's developing on the west side of that rotation. Right. So we might see that rotation actually spin up and become stronger. Right, which can happen in a situation like that. But you're right, there's clearly something going on right there. Yes. So there's a little spot where there's not that much reflectivity, so. I think John is listening to us as best he can. Um, you know, so that, that we could see a, a relatively sharp change in the character of the circulation uh, that you were just pointing out that's approaching yeah, it, Carbon Hill area. If there's any good thing, I don't see a TDS on here. I don't see a no. tornado debris signature, all right, w which is good. That's good. <laughs> uh, that, that is very good. So, but, but remember, if something is about to happen, you won't have a TDS right. until after right. the that's tornado right. begins. We don't, right, we can't. <laughs> He's right. We can't use the TDS as a warning mechanism. That is right. a confirmation thing. Yeah, that's thing. a confirmation mechanism, right. precisely. So, uh, so anyway, th that's the lead circulation. And, and really, uh, you know, looking at this thing, Brian, you, you basically got two circulations on this thing. You know, you, you've got this one right here and this one near Glen Allen. You've got two of these things. Yes. And uh, th th that's the way the structure has been changing. And here's the other one. Uh, you know, th this is another area where there's problems down here right below Fayette. And this has been kind of a right turner. Th this second circulation is passing south of the city of Fayette. This is moving east more toward Barrie. And that's the reason the Weather Service changed all these polygons. They've got basically uh, most of Fayette County in a polygon now for these separate circulations. And again, this is one that's coming south of Fayette and that's moving more east. And that could uh, affect the uh, city of, uh, of Barrie. But clearly, if you're in Fayette or Barrie, you need to be in a safe place right now. Small room, lowest floor, near the center, and away from windows. All right, so that's uh, the, the southernmost circulation. And then we have these other two up here. You've got this one, and then you've got this one, and both of these are capable of producing tornadoes. And this is affecting places like Hubbardville, Glen Allen, uh, Eldridge, and Carbon Hill. So if you are in any of these places we've called out, same thing. I would be in a safe place. Are these the remarkably extreme couplets like we saw earlier today? No, they're not. But like we've talked about, all it takes is one small tornado you know, coming down your street, and that's going to be the day that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Uh, one note here from, from 
the Weather Service in uh, Kevin Law is he, Kevin is the Science Operations Officer, the Sioux at the National Weather Service in Birmingham. He's stating what we've been talking about. The northern part of the line is consolidated, and it's going to be more of a damaging wind producer, uh, which means the threat is shifting from tornado activity to damaging straight line winds. In the supercells over in Mississippi, down toward Jackson on the southern end, that's going to be the main tornado threat. And I, and I think Kevin is right with that, and that's what we're trying to say that throughout the day today, that the, we're getting into the night, the, the threat is shifting from a tornado threat slowly to a damaging wind flash flooding event. And uh, that's the other thing. Understand that this thing is uh, uh, really slowed down, and we're going to have some tremendous rains with this. Uh, uh, and Brian, I've not been able to watch the stream. I assume that we, we've not. I'm looking at a lowering on his stream right now. Yes. And oftentimes we get so busy we keep our eye off the ball. And uh, he's still out around what the Nauvoo exit on, on the interstate, right? Yes, as far as I know. Um, so again, we are we are watching with great interest all of this. And again, uh, we've got. Another circulation that's broad down around reform. And let me just point out for those of you along the 82 corridor, uh, reform Gordo, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. There is no tornado warning down here. The reason we haven't focused on that, uh, this is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for northern Pickens, no tornado warning. The tornado warnings are for Fayette. And again, this, this is the southernmost circulation here uh, that's going to be approaching Barry. Uh, at this point, it's kind of out here around Bankston right now. Uh, and then up to the north, we have these other uh, rotational signatures that are uh, approaching Carbon Hill and Eldridge and Glen Allen. And again, all of these are kind of broad. They, they, they don't look especially tight. Uh, but again, we, we've got clear, clear De debris signature from uh, the yeah, I just saw Fayette that. Marion County line near east of Winfield. All right, so let's take a look at that. Uh, we're going to change products. Uh, this is the uh, correlation coefficient, and I think what he's looking at is probably best seen on that uh, differential phase product, which is right in through there. Uh, but again, there's a chance this could be a debris signature, and this is the du duopole data we have here. So again, this is a sign that this is pretty serious, and let, let's do a box, a double box with John Brown's live stream again, because John is right in this. I mean, he is, John is right in the in the midst of this and he's you know probably just to the southwest of it looking back in it but we're just gonna have to watch that the lightning strikes together and see if we see something uh that's illuminated i could almost read that sign on that bridge he's just <laughs> crossing under right up there uh my monitors are so small and my old man eyes don't work like they used to when i was a young man back in the old days uh but again this could clearly be uh some type of debris signature and again the weather service does believe that that is a debris signature that's on the uh, Fayette Marion County line east of Winfield. Uh, so uh, again, that is a, uh, a significant storm. I'm going to put the velocity data back on here. And we kind of stick with the velocity data because it is a lot easier to see these velocity couplets. And again, this is the one right here that is producing what could be a tornado that is down. Nobody should be driving along Interstate 22 at this point between Eldridge and Winfield. And let me just kind of clearly say that nobody should be driving along Interstate 22 between Eldridge and Winfield. Uh, we have a possible tornado that is crossing that uh, interstate highway. Uh, John is, again, not at the point where the tornado is crossing the interstate. He's in a safer spot, but w John's got a whole lot of fancy gear in that truck. And you don't have that in your vehicle more than likely. In fact, John probably has stopped. He'll do that a lot. You'll see John stopping on the side of the road as a course to keep him safe. Uh, so you see it's, there's still a lot of traffic out there, but obviously nobody should be out there along Interstate 22 at this point between, say, Carbon Hill and Winfield. We just kind of make those two points is that circulation is cutting across the highway right now. And uh, uh, the other circulation you can see pretty well, it's right down here. This is the circulation that will be coming up on the city of Barrie. It's passing south of Fayette, just maybe a little south of Bankston. It's about the point where Highway uh, 43 and uh, Alabama 13 come together. Uh, Highway 43 cuts over to Fayette, 13 keeps on going north. Highway 18 goes over to Barry. Everybody in Barry should be in their tornado safe place right now. And again, if you are, are not, if you're new to the area, the last place you want to be, it's a mobile home or a vehicle. Uh, you want to be in a small room in a site built house. Small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. Helmet if you've got one, and we'll be fine. We'll get through this. 
Um, seeing more traffic, Brian, about uh, uh, Pickens County requesting Pickens. ambulances uh, to a home. Roof blown off of, uh, they don't say what kind of structure, at County Road 65 in Fayette County. Oh, really? Okay, this is, this is new. So Yes, and that's coming in from one of the sky watchers. Okay, so... Uh, I think that may be Tommy, Tommy Williams. Yeah, that is Tommy, that is Tommy Williams. So yes. again, we've got a report of a roof blown off, uh, County Road 65 in Fayette County. Uh, that is uh, uh, just southwest of Eldridge, apparently. It's up in the northeastern part of Fayette County. So again, that is a sign that this is a pretty serious uh, situation. And all of these, you've got to take, uh, take them seriously. But clearly, that th this one is a pretty tight circulation that's coming right over Interstate 22. And it's very close to uh, Carbon Hill in Kansas. If you are anywhere close to Carbon Hill, Carbon Hill High School, right off the interstate out here, the community of Kansas that sits on Alabama Highway 5, the old US 78, uh, you need to be in a safe place that'll keep on moving to the northeast like that. More than likely, it's gonna stay a little south of Nauvoo. It's gonna cross Alabama Highway 5 down there below Nauvoo, but everybody from, uh, in terms of driving, nobody should be along Interstate 22 and nobody should be along Alabama Highway 5 as this tornadic circulation continues moving on to the uh, northeast. And we're watching in the other box John Brown, who is in the midst of this storm, uh, and again, he is on Interstate 22, and we're watching with uh, great interest, and again, John stops and he moves around based on uh, safety. So that's the northernmost circulation. This is the southernmost circulation, and again, this is very broad, but it's very intense, and again, this is coming up on the city of Barrie. Uh, this is uh, Highway 43 coming out of Fayette, coming down toward Northport. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 18 that goes over to Barrie and then Oakman. And uh, next in line is going to be the city of, uh, of Barrie with this. For the city of Fayette, I can pretty much give you an all clear. That circulation is passed south of you. You know, it's interesting for the city of Fayette, one went north, one went south. And uh, at Fayette, our Skycam, they have now almost six tenths of an inch of rain. So, yeah. uh, and that's, that has come in a very short period of time as well. So the flash flooding threat, especially on any rural roads where there are some hills, and small dips, uh, just keep that in mind because that is a significant amount of rain to have fallen in just approximately 20 minutes or so, James. Yep, and, and flash flooding is gonna be a real problem here. And you know, the, I think the greatest concern might be the second round. I mean, we, you know, we, we had an inch of rain yesterday. We get one or two inches tonight, get another one or two inches, and this is all gonna add up. And at some point, we're gonna have a problem. So flash flooding is a distinct possibility. And there's a flash flood watch in effect for all 67 uh, Alabama counties. And again, if you're just turning this on, uh, for those of you that are watching, we, we wanna remind you that, that we do not expect problems in Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden for a while. We have been sitting here watching this stuff over northwest Alabama for hours. The eastward progression has been very slow. Uh, for places like Anniston and Gadsden, it might be after 10 or 11 o'clock at the earliest before you have any issues. And the farther east you go, the severe weather parameters are not as high and the chance of severe weather is lower, which is a good thing. The parameters have clearly been maximized today over north and west Alabama. Now, let's go back to the graphics box, the main graphics system, and let's just show the polygon warnings. We'll take off the radar data. And this is what we have right now. In fact, we, 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 have, we have new warnings now for Tuscaloosa, this, and I, this is for I, yeah, that, I, that Fayette, yeah, the, the Pickens County deal. The I saw Pickens that. Pickens County, yes. So now we got warnings. Let's look at this one up here. This is in effect for Winston County. All right, uh, this includes the city of Haleyville. All right, this includes the city of Double Springs, which is right here. This includes the eastern part of. Uh, 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 Marion County. And again, this is for one circulation that's moving up like this. So a tornado warning in effect now for Winston County it includes Haleyville and Double Springs. Lynn, if you're in those communities, go to a safe place now. Let's go down to the south. We have a tornado warning in effect for parts of Tuscaloosa County. Let's make it perfectly clear who's in and who's out. This does not include the city of Tuscaloosa. In fact, let's pan down. Let me show you Tuscaloosa and Northport. You're not close to this. So if you are on the campus of the University of Alabama, you don't need to do anything. If you are in the city limits of Tuscaloosa, you are fine. Northport, you are fine. The, the tornado warning polygon begins up here around Northside High School and Walker Elementary School at Samantha. It includes the far northern part of the county. And this is for a circulation that is coming out of the northeastern part of Pickens County. Let's go back to the high res radar. I'll show you where those are. Uh, this is the circulation right here that has prompted the warning for Tuscaloosa County. Northern, extreme northern.
northern Tuscaloosa County. This is a case where if you're in the city of Tuscaloosa, you don't need to do anything. I know a lot of people are very anxious uh, over what has happened, uh, you know, three years ago, but this is a situation where you honestly do not need to do anything because you were not involved in this warning. Uh, so that is a tornado warning for the far northern part of uh, Tuscaloosa County. That is in effect until 8.30 this evening. This does not include the city of Tuscaloosa. This is basically for places like Northside uh, up in the far northern end of the county. Uh, so that is this circulation that is coming out of northeastern Pickens. Uh, this is northeast of Reform moving like that. This is another tornadic circulation that is moving off to the east. This is going to be getting close to Barry. And then up to the north, we have other problems up here. We have a possible tornadic circulation that is moving up in this direction. This will include Haleyville, Double Springs, and Lynn. We have another tornadic circulation near Carbon Hill. These are spots where there's rotation on radar, where we have areas capable of storms dropping a tornado. And Brian, I've not seen any other reports of damage here recently. We've had the Pickens County reports, uh, but any reports of damage on your end over there? No, nothing that I've seen so far, James. But, you know, again, we got to keep in mind there's, there's, it's in a lot of rural area and there's not a lot of people to be affected out there. I'm, you know, uh, so it's, and it may be very difficult for reports to get in or to get out of a damaged area when they do occur. So just keep that in mind. I think what we've been seeing with the tornado signatures that we've been seeing on radar, I think we really do have to treat all of these very, very seriously. And I, I do believe the Weather Service has done the right, right thing in pulling the trigger on this one as it's coming uh, out of the eastern part of Pickens County into the northern part of Tuscaloosa County because these storms have been spinning up tornadoes uh, some of the ones we've seen before darkness uh, set upon us, some of the uh, photographs that people have set in, some of those photographs have been very dramatic of the, of the tornadoes. And just because the light is gone and we can't see them, it doesn't mean that they are not spinning up too. So we just need to respect what we're seeing on radar and, and respect these warnings and stay in our safe places for a little bit longer. All right, so uh, let's kind of take a tour of these things. And again, we're we're going to watch John Brown's camera. John is uh, located uh, along Interstate 22, uh, and you can see we're watching for the lightning. But I, John would tell us, you've got text con communication with John, and if we had anything yes. there, he would tell us. We've got no damage there. So let's take this full screen. Let me just show you these rotational signatures and what we've got. This is a possible tornado northeast of Reform. Reform is in Pickens County along US 82. This is moving northeast. This is Northport. This is Tuscaloosa. Uh, so this does not include the city of Tuscaloosa, Northport, or the campus of the University of Alabama. And Brian, I said earlier, you don't need to do anything. The students are saying, do I need to study finals? <laughs> yes. I would, I would advise that. Uh, but I know you're only half studying because you're watching this on your iPad while you're, watching, while you're trying to study. But I'm glad you are. We're glad students pay attention to the weather. But this thing is not going to affect the city of Tuscaloosa, Northport. It will affect uh, uh, the far northern tip of Lake Tuscaloosa, the far northern tip. Uh, it will affect uh, the, the community of Samantha, and again, that's around Northside High School and Walker Elementary School, uh, the community of New Lexington, uh, the community of Wyndham Springs. This is up in extreme North Tuscaloosa County. So understand, Tuscaloosa County in terms of geography is huge. Tornado warning polygons are small. Respect the polygon. If you're in it, do something. And if you're not, you don't have to worry about a tornado. There is room for error. There is great room for error within these things. So this is circulation number one that is cutting across northern Tuscaloosa County. Circulation number two is almost right on Barry, and that is a pretty significant circulation. So if you're in the city of Barry and Fayette County, you've got a tornadic circulation basically right on top of you. Should have been in your tornado safe place about 20 minutes ago. There's been a warning well in advance of this. Tornadic circulation number three is located at Carbon Hill. This is right along Interstate 22. Nobody should be along Interstate 22, really between Jasper and between Winfield until all of this passes. And circulation number three, this is coming up on uh, Winston County, and this is the reason we have a tornado warning that includes Haleyville, Double Springs, Natural Bridge, and Lynn. So multiple tornado warning polygons are currently up for the northern part of Alabama, the northern and the western part. Again, no issues now for Birmingham or Tuscaloosa. And let's go back to our main graphic system, and I want to show the polygons again. We'll take the radar data off, and let's just show the polygons, all right? If you're in one of these red polygons, Polygons, 
you need to be in a safe place. If you're not, you are okay. The southernmost polygon includes northeastern Pickens in extreme northern Tuscaloosa County, north of the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport. The city of Fayette, you're in the clear. We have eastern Fayette County under a tornado warning polygon. That includes Barry and Hubbardville. We have extreme northwestern Walker County, Eldridge, Carbon Hill. You're in Nauvoo. You're under a tornado warning. We've got the western half of Winston County, Double Springs, Haleyville, Natural Bridge. Uh, if you are in any of these places, you need to be in a safe place. That is a small room on the lowest floor near the center, away from windows. No mobile homes, no cars. Helmet if you can. Bicycle helmet, batting helmet, hard sole shoes, air horn, whistle. We'll make it through this. Uh, we have had loss of life in the state today. Two people were killed in Limestone County. Uh, earlier today, uh, there was a civil emergency state in Limestone County because of the search and rescue that is underway there. And again, once we clear all of this weather, we go back to news, uh, then we are able to tell more of the story of what's happened up there. But as you know, we focus on ongoing weather that is a direct threat to life and property, which we have right now. Uh, the polygon that is in yellow, by the way, in Pickens County, that is a severe thunderstorm warning. That is not a tornado warning. Most of northern Pickens under a severe thunderstorm warning. We have multiple circulations. Really, there's one, two, three, four different circulations prompting these tornado warnings. Uh, the, the encouraging thing, you know, I've not seen, Brian, and correct me if I'm wrong, other than Pickens County, no. damage from these things. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Morris Cemetery Road in Fayette County, trees down. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right. That's, that's why I said we, we, we just can't, uh, we can't make uh, a flat statement that there's been no reports. Yes, we have not received reports. It doesn't mean that damage did not occur. Right. Uh, so we, we just have to keep that in mind throughout all of this. Let's go back to the uh, high-res radar behind me, and, and the circulation continues to tighten up uh, just north of Carbon Hill. Uh, this has... This is pretty much along Interstate 22, and again, that circulation is going to be crossing Highway 5. If you're anywhere between Jasper and Nauvoo along Highway 5, you need to be in a safe place. Uh, this is significantly tighter. This has really tightened up over the last uh, 5 to 10 minutes, and this circulation is going to be cutting across Highway 5 uh, down here below Nauvoo. So this is a tornado warning for the far western end of Walker County. This does not include the city of Jasper. If you're in Jasper, no tornado warning for you. If you're in Parrish, if you're in Sipsey, if you're in Dora, if you're in Summerton, Cordova, there is no tornado warning for you. It's up here for this far northwestern part of Walker County. Uh, the circulation that is coming up into Winston County is clearly less defined, but the Weather Service saw something that caught their eye, and they believe that there should be a tornado warning for Winston. Uh, so, uh, uh, they keep that in place. If you're in Double Springs, Haleyville, Natural Bridge, Lynn, you've got a tornado warning. Uh, we've got a report now right here of a tornado that is on the ground uh, five miles west of Eldridge. Uh, this is coming in from the uh, National Weather Service. And uh, again, that is with the storm you're seeing. Called it, into 911. Right. It, it doesn't exactly jive up with this position. This might have been earlier. Uh, that is the circulation that's come up into Winston County. Uh, this circulation is well to the east of Eldridge. Eldridge sits right here. This is Kansas. This is Carbon Hill. And again, that is in the process in a matter of minutes of crossing Alabama Highway 5. Uh, so that is the uh, situation there. That is a very tight circulation. In fact, the Weather Service is now saying the public has reported a tornado uh, with this storm near Carbon Hill. So this is one you want to take seriously. Uh, go ahead and go through your tornado precautions right now. Uh, the, the reason Winston County is under a tornado warning earlier, the uh, Winston County EMA reported a tornado uh, eight miles southwest of Lynn moving northeast at 30. Uh, again, the, the radar very noisy. There's no well-defined circulation up in here. But again, you have to respect the report. And if there's a polygon up, stay in your safe place. Clearly, that is a very important circulation that is just north of Carbon Hill, about to cross Highway 5 south of Nauvoo. Let's look at some of the other circulations. This thing uh, is tightening up. Uh, this located near Barrie. You've got the circulation right here. It looks like it might be passing a smidgen north and northeast of Barrie. That's the update. This is coming over here toward Oakman. Oakman is right here in Walker County. And again, I would assume the Weather Service is going to uh, uh, go ahead and probably extend uh, the tornado warning, perhaps deeper into Walker County for that. But again, I would say that if you are along Highway 18 from Barry back over to Oakman, you want to be in a safe place. Uh, this thing is still in Fayette County. Uh, 
It's about where the railroad trestle is over Highway 18, and uh, that's going to keep on rolling on in the direction of Oakman. So again, there's no formal tornado warning, but if you're in Oakman, I'd think about taking precautions pretty quickly. Uh, this is a tornado uh, potentially on radar. This is in northeast Tuscaloosa County. Uh, that is uh, Alabama Highway 171 that goes up to uh, Fayette out of Northport. I'm sorry, that's U.S. 43. Alabama 171 is right here. And again, that is a pretty strong circulation. So if you're in Northside, anywhere near Northside High School of the city of Samantha, the town of Samantha, you want to be in a safe place. And we stress this tornado signature does not include the city of Tuscaloosa, does not include the city of Northport, does not include the campus of the University of Alabama. You're not even close to this. So you don't need to do anything, all right? Uh, and, and, you know, Brian, in some cases, sirens sound countywide. You might hear a siren. Right. But that doesn't mean you're necessarily under a tornado warning. So that's a polygon. Let's go back to the graphic system. James, I need to update you here. Yeah, go, uh, go ahead. The, yeah, the, um, uh, the graphic